We're loafing along at 100 miles per hour or so in fourth gear when I nail the gas. There's a hiss of air as the mighty 8.0 liter 16 cylinder engine behind my shoulders takes a deep breath, and the Bugatti Chiron lunges at the horizon. I make the first shift at precisely 6,556 revolutions per minute. Four turbochargers are pumping 26.8 pounds per square inch of boost, gulping 35 cubic feet of air every second, and putting 2,866 pounds of peak pressure on each connecting rod. The water pump is circulating coolant through the engine fast enough to fill your bathtub in 11 seconds. At wide open throttle, the fuel pump will suck the 26.4 gallon gas tank dry in about 7 minutes. With startling suddenness, we're doing 200 miles per hour. Bugatti engineers say the Chiron will accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in less than 2.5 seconds, to 124 miles per hour in less than 6.5 seconds, to 186 miles per hour in less than 13.6 seconds. From the driver's seat, riding the military spec thrust of 1,479 horsepower and 1,180 pounds to foot of torque in conjunction with all-wheel drive and massive tires, it feels every bit that quick. On the road the Chiron's top speed is electronically limited, limited to 261 miles per hour. It will go faster. The Chiron will easily beat the Veyron Super Sports 268 mile per hour production car VMAX record, insists Bugatti boss Wolfgang Derheimer, but he won't say by how much. We're keeping that a surprise for you, he smiles. The Bugatti Chiron is utterly extraordinary, and not just because it's faster and more powerful than the car that has been the benchmark for hypercar speed and muscle for more than a decade, the Bugatti Veyron. Or because it costs a cool $2,998,000, including destination, you'll be pleased to know. No, the Chiron resets the benchmark because it's also smoother, more refined and, crucially, more fun to drive than its storied predecessor. The Veyron was a car largely defined by thrust and velocity. The Chiron adds agility and personality to the mix, enhanced by a thoughtful melange of technology and luxury. For the Chiron's creation, the brief given by Ferdinand Pieck, godfather of the Veyron, to Durheimer and his team was simple, make it better, in every way. They have succeeded. It starts with the engine. Although the basic architecture is unchanged, the mighty W16 has been redesigned to reliably produce 8% more power and 9% more torque than in the Veyron Supersport. The extra grunt comes courtesy of four turbochargers that are 69% bigger than those used on the Super Sport engine. But that's not the whole story. At low revs, exhaust gases from each bank of eight cylinders are fed to just one turbo on either side of the block. Then, at 3,800 revolutions per minute, a flap is opened in each exhaust manifold to feed the second turbocharger. The result is a torque curve that's dead flat from 2,000 revolutions per minute to 6,000 revolutions per minute and a power curve with the upward trajectory of a ballistic missile. We'll get back to that metaphor in a moment. The engine sits in an all-new carbon fiber monocoque with a torsional stiffness of 50,000 newton meters slash degree, comparable to that of a Le Mans LMP1 prototype. How strong is that in layman's terms? Bugatti was able to crash test the same car several times to verify the aluminum crush structures at the front and rear of the car. If you've ever witnessed the violence of a crash test, you'll realize how stunning that previous sentence is. The suspension is height adjustable and features adaptive shocks. In conjunction with electronic control of the power steering, the all-wheel drive system's torque distribution, the rear differential, the active aerodynamics and the stability and braking control systems, engineers have crafted five selectable drive protocols, lift, EB, autobahn, handling, and top speed. Four drive modes are selectable via a rotary controller on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. EB is the standard driving mode. Lift mode raises the ride height 4 tenths of an inch front and rear to enable the Chiron to be loaded on a truck or plane or to clear steep drives and speed humps. Autobahn mode, which is also automatically activated at 112 miles per hour, drops the front end of the Chiron 8 tenths of an inch to improve the car's aerodynamic angle of attack at high speeds, adds more on center weight to the steering, and raises the active rear spoiler farther into the airflow. Handling mode further stiffens the suspension, programming the shocks to catch rebound motions 50% sooner, adds more torque to the steering effort, and tilts the rear wing to deliver more downforce. At 200 miles per hour the Chiron feels utterly rock steady, preternaturally relaxed, barely breaking a sweat, exactly what you would expect of a car running at less than 75% of its potential. Autobahn and handling modes will take you to 236 miles per hour. Going faster requires selecting top speed mode, activated via a second separate speed key, which slots into the floor by the driver's seat. While stationary, of course. Think of it as the automotive equivalent of ordering a ballistic missile launch. 
After the Chiron's digital neural network runs a systems check, the front end is lowered an additional 6 tenths of an inch, and the rear comes down 1.2 inches, dropping the whole car closer to the bitumen. The full-width rear wing is also snugged closer to the carbon fiber bodywork and set at a shallower angle. Both measures are designed to reduce aerodynamic drag, and they enable the Chiron to hit its speed limited 261 miles per hour. For those owners who want to go beyond that outrageous pace, right to the very edge of the Chiron's performance envelope, Bugatti will help them do it in a factory-owned car, or the owner's own, fitted with a set of special ultra-finely balanced wheels and tires, plus a battery of additional sensors to be monitored by factory technicians during the VMAX run. What you notice from behind the wheel, apart from being shoved firmly back in the seat by a relentless surge of thrust every time you hit the gas, is the crisper throttle response. The revised W16 allows you to finesse the Chiron's attitude through corners with a precision that simply wasn't possible in the Veyron. There's much more sensitivity in the chassis, too, the steering telegraphing more clearly what's going on where the rubber meets the road. Although by no means small, it's about as wide as an Escalade and weighs as much as an Audi A8, the Chiron shrinks around you on a winding two-lane in a way the Veyron never could. For that you can thank Bugatti chassis guru Loris Baikaki, who oversaw the final tweaks to the Chiron chassis tuning, focusing on steering feel and chassis balance. We changed many, many parameters on the car compared with the Veyron, says Baikaki, who credits Wolfgang Derheimer for the big Bugatti's character change, he said, if you have to choose between comfort or sporty, please take sporty. A key change was tire spec, compared with the Veyron, the Chiron's rear tires are narrower but larger in diameter, 21 inch versus 20 inch, while the fronts are wider. Now, in a steady state corner, the mechanical balance is better, Baikaki says. In other words, there's less understeer. What is no less remarkable than its staggering performance is how unremarkable the Chiron feels mooching along city streets at 20 to 40 miles per hour. It's docile and calm and comfortable, the suspension riding over road acne with surprising fluency, the giant Ricardo 7-speed dual-clutch transmission seamlessly switching between ratios, the steering light and accurate, the pedal feel of the giant carbon ceramic brakes beautifully modulated. It feels about as edgy as a Honda Accord on a soccer mom run. The superbly finished interior is impressively roomy for a two-seater, and the user interface technology is presented in the same cleverly reductive manner as an Apple product. For example, the line of rotary controllers marching down the flying buttress center console look after the HVAC functions, but the information shown on the small digital screens in each of them can be changed at the press of a button. In performance mode, it showed I hit precisely 6,556 revolutions per minute and used exactly 1,437 horsepower on my way to a genuine 204 miles per hour. Hmm, looks like I left 42 horsepower on the table. Should have tried harder, everything from ancillary information such as oil pressure and water temperature to audio settings to tire pressures to sat nav information is presented on two high resolution digital screens located on either side of a giant analog speedometer that reads to 500 km per hour. In US spec Chirons, the speedo will show 300 miles per hour, why an analog speedo? It doesn't fade away when the ignition is off, Durheimer says, so when people look inside, they can see how fast the car can go. And they will talk about it. Yes, indeed they will. The Chiron is a beguiling combination of hypercar and grand tour. You can drive it fast, very, very fast, without feeling your hair is on fire, your palms are sweating, and your heart is hammering away inside your chest. Like a battleship, the Chiron's immense power is wrapped in an imperious calm. There are those who question the relevance of a car this powerful, this fast, this expensive. But that is to ignore the astounding engineering achievement the Bugatti Chiron represents. Durheimer neatly sums up its place in history. In terms of combustion engine cars, I think this will be the peak, he says, subtly acknowledging the fact the Chiron's replacement will inevitably be a high-performance hybrid. 30 years from now, people will look back and say, that's how they did it back then. He's absolutely right.